let's start, Michael, by talking about the college's website. It's uh, had a little bit of a reboot, a redesign, and it is now live. Uh, tell me a little bit about the uh, website. You know, it's important that uh, the new program that we have in aviation technology, finally on Friday, we finally posted up the, the really the website piece of this program. And it's amazing, in, in a very, very short period of time, an uh, awful lot of information has popped up. And obviously, people are looking at it uh, literally over the weekend. I got my first phone call from people are saying, you mean this is really happening? You, you're really going to train people to fix airplanes? And, and the honest answer is, yes, yes. we are, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Uh, right now, uh, up at the Plymouth Airport, up at the Municipal Airport, uh, you get to it off, uh, seems to me it's exit uh, 6, actually. Um, uh -huh. We're literally rehabbing a huge hangar space to put an airframe and power plant program together to train people to go out and fix airplanes and of all kinds of shapes and sizes. And now the aviation technology program is up, and you can see it. Uh, what's amazing is the, the full program in our certificate in uh, airframe uh, repair and maintenance. Our power plant certificates are up there. And the whole look at what the, uh, what the maintenance technicians will do, what you'll study, uh, the kind of, of financing available for the education, it's all there. And apparently people are looking. And uh, I, I think to me that's very, very exciting because there's been a lot of chatter. It's taken us almost two years, which to Dr. Cox is way, way, way too long. I'll assure you of that. Um, but I think what's astonishing here is that the public is finally having another new program out of the college, and it sits there. If you go to capecod.edu and then hit slash aviation, uh, it'll take you right to the site. And uh, we're actually going to welcome people here. Uh, I think that's the neat thing over the next uh, number of months, every month, we're going to hold an open house, kind of a welcome information day. And uh, this week, it's a good time to start talking about this, because this Wednesday, uh, we're going to welcome people to campus, 1 o'clock, and also at 6 o'clock. Uh, the 1 o'clock one is, is generally more for our own students. And by the way, there are a lot of them here who are looking at maybe pre-engineering. Maybe they're looking at something on in the in the sciences area but they're not sure what so wednesday at one o'clock starting in our admissions uh, office uh, we'll begin to welcome people to talk a little bit about what this program's all about and then at six o'clock we'll do the same thing uh, we'll move from uh, our admissions office over to lecture hall c and we'll actually have some video of, of some of the training involved some of the aircraft that are involved and uh, I, i'm i'm really excited because this really puts it in place that we're really uh, putting the program together. So it really needs, and it all starts now up on the website. So it's, uh, it, it's getting going, and every day something else happens. So it's, uh, it's a pretty neat thing. We even did things this weekend, so it's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. Absolutely. I understand uh, <clears throat> there was some crew down at, at the Chatham Airport uh, taking apart a plane that's going to be used in the program. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting when uh, people say, well, what did you do this weekend? Uh, well, I, I went and took a plane <clears throat> apart. What? You know, <laughs> really? Well, the nice thing is, and here, the, the partners that we have with us, Cape Air, certainly, JetBlue, we have a number of other, the very large aircraft uh, manufacturers uh, providing uh, pieces of airplanes, entire whole airplanes to us. But the private air industry and, and people who have private planes as well, uh, we, we had, in fact, one full airplane actually donated to us that's been flown to the Plymouth Airport already there. And another airplane that uh, is in need of repair uh, was not able to be flown, and, and Mike Wallers, a director of our program, a number of others, uh, started the process. They went to Chatham this weekend and started disassembling this airplane. It'll be put on trucks, and uh, Tuesday of this week, uh, tomorrow, they expect to be delivering the pieces all the way up to uh, Plymouth and putting them in the hangar and getting ready for uh, people to begin to use it uh, in terms of, of repair and maintenance and learning how to put it all back together so that it, it will fly again or at least will show students when they have to work on airplanes how to fly it again. You know, talking about, about partners, we don't think of this company, uh, if you are uh, from the state of Maine where I am and you hear the, the name Bombardier or Bombardier, 
uh, you think of snow machines. And uh, in fact, Bombardier is one of the major, major manufacturers of commercial and business aircraft. Uh, the smaller aircraft that, that we think of that that commercial people fly their company jets here or there and, and a number of other aircraft, they have a huge maintenance facility down in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. And just a couple of weeks ago, they invited uh, students from the various uh, airframe and power plant aviation training schools down to Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Uh, what's interesting is they only invited women because it was a specific day focused on women in aviation maintenance in A&P or, or airframe and power plant because there are so few women in this program. And we were lucky enough, we have two women very, very actively involved in it, and they went down and they were treated like royalty. And uh, the women came back and said, you know, they almost didn't let us out of the plant until we signed on the dotted line that we'd go work for them when we came out of the program. <laughs> the, the need for highly trained people in this area of the industry is, is dramatic. Uh, we're talking uh, a area where over the next 10 to 15 years, so many people are going to be retiring out. Uh, if you think about it, the people who were trained to do this, many of them came out of the military uh, at, the, at the end of the Vietnam War era that came out in, in a number of times, and they're all of an age and they're retiring. The industry now, uh, the major airline industries, oftentimes are sending their airplanes, frankly, out of the country to, to be certified uh, in terms of the FAA requirements. They're desperate for help. And uh, the women had a great time down at Bombardier in Windsor Locks, but in fact said that everywhere they turned, uh, there were people saying to them, oh, you want to get into this field? Oh, you want to do this? Well, think about it. A program is going to begin the 25th of January that in 12 months will, if, you know, full-time, be focused, get in there and get the training and education, and you're certified to leave for positions that start at fifty to $65,000 a year. And everybody in the world will, will be waiting with open arms. Cape Air, right down the, the street, if you will, from the college. Certainly the, the private general aviation people that repair and certify airplanes. I literally was talking to someone over the phone this weekend saying, tell me about it. I understand this is happening for real now. Talk to me about it. The phone is starting to ring. The same is true up at Logan, where they're desperately looking for people. Uh, the reality is this is one of those kinds of positions where it almost sounds too good to be true, but all we would say to you is go talk to anyone in the aviation industry and talk to them about how hard it is for them to find someone certified to work on those airplanes. And trust me, you don't want to be flying in an airplane that doesn't have someone highly trained fixing it. Uh, and and they'll tell you why we're putting this program together. Very, very exciting. Absolutely. And, Michael, one last thing I wanted to touch on was the uh, the STEM brown bag style roundtable discussion. That's going to be taking place tomorrow, uh, talking a little bit about uh, careers in green energy and in, or engineering, rather, and environmental science. Uh, you know, and this is a very good lead-in. Tomorrow, and we'd welcome the public into our Tilden Art Center. Uh, it starts at 11 o'clock, and actually the program repeats again at about 12.45. The whole area of science and technology, and the college certainly has been known for, gosh, for 20-some years as, as a, a green institution and really focused on the environmental area. The science, technology, engineering, and math also focuses in all of that area of green energy. And, and we welcome the public up here. We're going to have a roundtable discussion with our, our faculty, uh, Jill Neuvauer de Piper, Bob Cody, Dean Cody, here with a number of of our faculty and experts in the area talking about where are the jobs in the green industry as well.